Hello gardeners! Today I'm trimming my abovitis and in this video I'm going to explain to you why we trim them, how do we do it and when we do it. So stay tuned and let's begin! Why do we want to give our abovitis a light trim every year? Well, we uh, trim uh, shrubs and trees for denser foliage and our abovitis look much better when they are denser since they are so, such long-living trees in our gardens. We want them to perform well. Another reason is abovitis do have a tendency, especially when they are young, to de develop a lot of competing leaders. And if we don't trim those leaders, and I will be showing how I do it in my last segment when I will be actually trimming my abovitis, if we don't keep those leaders at bay, but if we don't shorten them, those leaders eventually will go high and tall, compete with each other, and abovitis will wear a very bare brown uh, interior. And if you live in a very cold weather, in a cold winter, those branches might fall uh, apart under the weight of snow and never come back again. So generally it's a good idea to train abovitis to one nice tall leader and keep abovitis nice and tight with nice tight foliage. That is why these are two main reasons why we trim ab our abovitis. Another great hint, abovitis do not uh, benefit from rejuvenating pruning. And what is rejuvenating pruning? Pruning when we cut drastically shrub or trees down or inwards to the exposed brown wood. So if we do that on our abovitis, we cut our abovitis all the way into the brown tissues, our abovitis will have such a hard and long, sometimes several years, time to rejuvenate that foliage, to bring that foliage back, that we will be tired of waiting or it might not even happen at all. So a light annual pruning, just touching the tips of the branches. This way they will start branching out, creating more branches. Remember the beginner gardeners, when we wound the branch, the response usually is to create more thicker of the growth. So that will, will happen to our abovitis with annual light trim. So this is the main information on why we trim uh, abovitis. When do we do the trimming of these beautiful lovies? Well, the best there is a window, which starts at the beginning of spring, just before the new foliage starts to grow. And uh, it's kind of hard to see how abovitis are growing because abovitis do have this scale-like uh, foliage. And usually what they do, they keep, of course, their evergreens, they keep their foliage through the year. And only the third year foliage is being lost inside the plant. So it's kind of hard to see when abovitis are building new foliage. Usually happens at the beginning of spring and then slowly plant kind of goes into this quiet time in the middle of summer and that is when the window is slowly closing to be able to give abovitis a light trim. So the window is between the beginning of spring, the best time, be just before all the new foliage is starting to grow. And then the window goes all the way to the middle of summer. I would say not even the middle of summer. Right now is 25th, 24th of uh, June. And I would say by the end of June, we should be finished trimming abovitis. And of course, it all depends where you live. I live in zone six, seven with cold winters. And that's the time when abovitis would be actively growing in spring. When you do it in fall, you will do yourself the service. You will harm the tree. It's too close to the cold weather coming in and abovitis might not cope with uh, producing new foliage. And that new foliage, those uh, scale-like uh, foliage might be damaged by the cold weather. And we don't want to do that. We want abovitis to go into winter as healthy as possible. Remember, watering is very important in the fall. I'm just putting it in just in case you didn't see my other videos about abovitis for all those people to know watering these babies before going into winter is very important for them to stay hydrated. Okay, so we are done with that. When? Now let's do how we do that. Well, how do we do that? Well, here we are. Don't do my mistake and crowd the bottom of your abovitis shrub because the axis of sun is very important to the bottom. 
Otherwise, your abavite will start losing bottom uh, leaves. You see, my has a little bit of that problem already because I'm not staying on top of cleaning out all black our Susans around him. So, if you don't want to have this bare footage, make sure that the bottom is not crowded with all plants. Another rule of pruning would be make sure that the bottom is staying wider than the top. So it would be pyramidal shape. Why is that? Again, shading. If the top is wider than the bottom, the top will block the sun and the bottom might be slowly eventually dying off. So these are two main rules of trimming these beauties. And now let me do that. And what I will do with this guy, I will just quietly take just a little bit of this foliage. Not much at all. And usually if you have to take a lot, oh, I love the scent. Wonderful. Don't take more than 20% because there are cases when you have to really make the abovite narrow when it is overgrown. So keep that in mind. Abovites don't like to lose a lot of foliage. And what I like to do, I like to do this uh, going up with my cicatees. It cuts in much smoother fashion. Oh, it really smells so good right now. Basically what I do, I don't want to cut this little guy. He's very valuable. He is the uh, uh, top stem, which will bring my abovite taller. See this growth? It's kind of disproportional here because we have this uh, top. I'm going to trim it. Okay, so here I'm going to trim a little bit more. Alright, so this is done. The job of trimming is done. And I really went very lightly around and I kind of trimmed more heavily this side. <clears throat> so what I'm doing to this, I'm going to trim this leader. So basically what I do, I just cut the leader off. It doesn't really show in the foliage. Maybe there is like a little pocket here, which is okay. It will close quickly. But what it does, it deprives this leader to going high and quick and compete with the main leader. And again, if you have cold winters or you want just to have a nice one narrow abovite, you train it to one leader. And also you can see that there is a difference in foliage. The older foliage is a little bit darker and the newer foliage is lightless, lighter. So here I expose the old foliage and it looks a little bit darker, no worries. New foliage will mature during the summer and your variety would be looking nice as ever. And now, at the end of it, don't forget you to give your tree a beautiful long soak if you don't expect any rain. And this is just to show everyone how much do we need to water our abovites. Abovites are evergreen trees. They have a good, well-developed root system and they do need a lot of water. So this is how much I water at one time. So this is two 
um, gallons of watering can. So approximately six, seven liters. And I'm going to use three of these to water one uh, tree. And that would be enough for one watering. So when you want to water your bovitis every day a little bit like this, no, that doesn't work. Do this. Three of these once and then wait for next rain or again if uh, rain is not there in four or five days. If the tree is not established, you better stay on top of watering because your abovite comes into your garden with such a big top mass and with such a small root system that your abovite needs you to regularly water for the first year. And I cannot stress enough how important it is. There are plenty of sickish looking abovites. So this is one, two more of these. This is second one. And this one is the third one. I do have two more videos about different uh, topics on how to grow abovides. Please check. The first one is right here. And the follow-up after that video would be the second video. And hopefully all of us would be able to grow these beautiful trees so well in our gardens. And we wouldn't be those frustrated gardeners with failed abovites. All right. One happy tree here. Happy gardening. And one happy gardener here. <laughs> See you in my next video.